This segment of Cardinal Clips, we present Dr. Jerry Lucard, who's a professor of music in, at the University of Minnesota. And you have a past with the marching band, don't you? I absolutely do. Yeah, uh, in 1997, I came to the University of Minnesota 17 years ago and was director of the marching band at that time for, for eight seasons. Um, and the program grew so rapidly that we had to you know, hire more staff. Well, it must have been the outstanding leadership and the eagerness with which you presented the music because the people, the kids we talked to are just fired up. Well, they, they are fired up. And they're always fired up. It's amazing how long they can stay that way. I mean, you know, we're rehearsing here this morning, but they're going to be here all day, and you'll find them just as energetic tonight after several hours of doing this. Uh, you started out as a marching band director, and now you're a professor of music within the department. What drove you to be a marching band director? Well, it was actually my high school band experience. I had a really terrific high school band. I was the drum major. So marching band has been part of my life, you know, since I was, you know, 16, 15. And, uh, and that was really my inspiration for going into music to begin with. So I worked at the high school level and the junior high level and then the university. So where are you from originally? Uh, just outside of Ann Arbor, Michigan is where I grew up, a little town called Saline, Michigan. You don't ever catch any flack from friends in Michigan that you're at the University of Minnesota, do you? Oh, heavens no. No, not at all. Uh, actually, I, uh, I, had, I had a great time at the University of Michigan, and I had directed the Michigan Marching Band for a season, and then went to Texas for several years, and then made my way back to the Midwest. So it seems to me like you really have worked for some really, I mean, big time marching bands, the University of Michigan, the University of Texas, the University of Minnesota. That's an, that's an impressive resume. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, they all are very big programs with great tradition, um, like the Minnesota band. I mean, we're, we've been at it for 122 years now. So, you know, after that length of time, you start, you know, you not only change, but you look back a lot. As a professor within the music department, what kind of kids do you get in, in marching band? As you know, uh, the best kids in the state of Minnesota are in music programs. They're in band, orchestra, and choir. So um, when you take the top 1% of the top 3%, uh, they're really good kids. I mean, they're great students. Uh, the average GPA in this group of 320 that's uh, in here today is a 3.6. That's the average. And when you, t when you ask the students, you know, it's, well, when you tell the students, it's a 3.6 GPA is the average, they all look at each other and go, okay, which one of us is bringing it down? You know? <laughs> that's, their, that's their attitude about it. They're, they're real scholars. Well, my understanding is, is that they're not all music majors. You've got engineers and mathematicians yeah. and people like that that are in the program. Absolutely. Um, there's only 5% music majors. So, I mean, it really, uh, there's a lot of talent musical talent in, in all over the university and all over society. But, uh, but yeah, if we didn't have the engineers, the business majors, and the pre-med, we'd, uh, we'd be a lot smaller band. <laughs> this is the first time you've been to Wilmer. Um, I don't know, is this the first time you, that the band has played in a, in a venue like this for one of these? You know, it's the first time in a long time. Uh, years ago, when I, actually when I first came to the university, we took the band on a mini tour and we played a high school football game in Alexandria. We took the band up to Hibbing, Minnesota, and played in their auditorium, a similar program to this. We were a smaller band then, uh, and so we could fit in that auditorium. And, uh, but we haven't done this in a very long time. The people who sit in that front row of those chairs, they're gonna, they, they're gonna probably have their hands over their ears part of the time. Well, our hearing audiology department would say they probably would want to hear yeah, some earplugs, but what we've learned, um, from our audiology department is that uh, it's not only the amount of sound, the decibel level, but it's the duration of the sound. So a couple hours you can take quite a lot, but if, it, if you did it every day, that's when it becomes destructive. So how big can it get? You've got 320 members now. How big, how big do you want it to be? Well, uh, 320. <laughs> that is the magic number. Uh, we built a facility at TCF Bank Stadium for the marching band. And we bought, purchased instruments. Every instrument that you see is played. It's all university uh, instruments, uniforms, et cetera. We are built for 320. That's, what, that's how large we will be um, going forward. And uh, when I came to the university, it was about 160. And uh, actually, a really quick story is I met with the uh, president at the time, Mark Udoff, 
and uh, we had a conversation around this and, and he said well i asked him how large should the band be here i can grow a band you know we can do this together and uh he goes well how large is the university of wisconsin's band and i had done my homework and i said 280 and he said then we should have 281. <laughs> There's a, just a little competition. Just a little competition, you know, just bragging rights, I guess. But 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 then we did set out to really grow a band of 300. It has we did you know take it to 320 when we you know several years ago and really built the stadium for that size ensemble. Is there a lot of competition to be part of those 320? Some sections more than others. Uh, the drum line, for instance, is we have a restricted number of instruments, 30 instruments, and uh, so. When 80 people show up to audition, yeah, it's competitive. Uh, but all sections are some to more degree than others. But but uh, here's a here. I mean, I th this is something we really believe in at the university. There's a place for you in our program. We also have six concert bands, several jazz bands. So if marching band isn't the, the first step in your career at Minnesota in the band family, then you, you might join. And a number of these students that you see here join in their second year because they just had the desire and they stayed with it. And if you have the desire and stay with it, you'll be part of this program. Do you give band, marching band scholarships? We're growing that. Um, and that's one of my responsibilities now is to work on the endowments and scholarships. And uh, we're doing well. We dispersed about $70,000 this fall in scholarships. Now you were here long enough that you, part, you marched in the Metrodome, your, your bands played there and now you're in an open air stadium. How is it different? Oh, it's night and day is a way to describe it. It was always night in the Metrodome um, uh, with the lights, the coveredness, uh, the sound of the band was always muffled. Felt like you had a blanket kind of over the ensemble and taking it out into the, the bright of day, both the uniforms, the instruments sparkle and look great um, in the sun. And, uh, and the band just sounds terrific outside because it has, the sound has somewhere to go and it doesn't get trapped. And uh, so the real sound of the band, in fact, the first time I actually heard this band in its really best state was when we went to El Paso for the Sun Bowl because <laughs> we were outside in a nice crisp stadium, actually similar to uh, TCF Bank Stadium where there's some reflective surface outdoors. It's beautiful. Yeah. The other thing is, it seems like the, the music on the PA system plays a lot louder than, than you're either able to play, capable, desire to play. Um, is there some secret that they play when you don't? How do you decide when they get to play and you get to play? Right. Well, like most things now, you know, a game is a production. So there's actually a producer that, and people are on headset. So, um, for commercial reasons, uh, and also when the band leaves the stands, for instance, to march halftime, it takes us several minutes to get the band from their seating to the, to the sideline. During that time, they'll play the, the canned music, as they call it, through the PA system um, at, to keep the crowd energized. And then during quarter breaks and things like that, for advertising purposes, uh, sometimes I have the PA work. But we, it's all choreographed, it's all coordinated and produced. Um, so it's not coincidental. As far as the volume goes, as I was mentioning earlier, um, this band is really loud. It's, it's as loud as the PA system, it's just very directional. So wherever you're pointing the band is where the sound is going. So when the band's playing straight out on the field, there's a purpose for that actually. It, it's a little disruptive actually to the, to the opposing team's huddle. Um, and uh, so wherever you aim the band is, what, is where it, the sound goes. And the PA system just has a broader throw. I mean, it throws the sound everywhere. So, so as a uh, as the former marching band person, it's got to be a lot more fun when you're seven and two instead of one and eight. The good news about uh, the band, the band, you know, runs on its own pulse. You know, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily ride the wave of wins and losses. It has its own, and you see that t tonight. Um, although it's there to support the team and be part of that whole experience and the game day experience, um, you know, the, the team's, or the team, the band is down like a, like a normal fan, I suppose, for a few hours after the game, if you lose a game. But then, you know, they come back to rehearsal on Monday and they're just happy to be each, around each other and back together. So um, it certainly is nice to win football, no question about it. 
but it doesn't make the band better or worse. Well, I, I got to believe, though, that it's, it's got to be more fun to go to Orlando to a bowl than Boise or El Paso in January. Absolutely, yeah. And, and, and the closer you get to January 1st, you know, it just has more attention and has more energy. Um, and, uh, yeah, it makes it more exciting, more competitive. Thank you, Jerry. It's been great. I really enjoyed talking to you and meeting you.